everybody, welcome back to the Austin Lindsay channel. Not long ago, a group of really awesome girls asked if I would do a KDA photo shoot with them. How do you say it? KDA? KDA. 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 <laughs> KDA, if you don't know, is a um, made up pop group for the uh, game League of Legends. And it has a lot of really cool colors, really uh, saturated colors, awesome lighting. So of course I said yes. So what we did is we met up and we decided what we could get done in the time we had available. Um, and then we uh, made a Facebook group and that allowed us to kind of put in some inspiration images and uh, kind of keep on task of where we were, where we needed to be. So from there, we rented the studio and did the shoot. What I'll do is I'll put up some behind the scenes video, do a little bit of narration. And after that, I'll open up some PSD files and kind of walk you through how I composited these images together. Here, I'm just doing a little bit of setup. What I'm using for lights is the Godox Flashpoint system. It's pretty much the same thing, just different branding. I'm using the Flashpoint Explore 400 Pros. Um, those are my two main lights. Um, there's one as the key light overhead at the Octabox. There's one back behind on a small stand pointing toward the camera to give some rim light. And then I have three speed lights. Uh, it's a combination of Godox and New Year speed lights. The only problem with these ones is when you start getting into the higher powers like the quarter, half, and full power, um, settings they take a little bit longer to recharge but overall they're really awesome flashes to have around. We have uh, the light set up so I have our main light is a is an octabox and I have the grid on every so often depending on how I want the lighting to look on that shot. I have a light overhead here that has a kind of maroon gel. I've got two side lights here and these are all um, speed lights. And then I've got a light back behind here that's uh, shining back through, uh, kind of lighting the side of the model as well. Um, these are my settings. B is my main light. A is the backlight. Um, C is the uh, overhead light here. Um, and then D and E are the two side lights and they're different powers depending on how close or far they're standing to the light. All right, here's a walkthrough of this image, how I created this group shot. Um, basically, everybody was um, retouched on their own document, and then I brought them in here as a smart object, and I used a smart object so that way I could um, scale without losing any quality. So I put them all in here, and to get their little windows basically I made a mask uh, brought up the marquee tool or the selection tool um, with a square and then command T will allow you to free transform it and if you hold down control you can skew it um, so I just skewed it into an angle and then I filled that um, angle with or I filled that mask with white um, and that way it showed through to the uh, person below and then what you want to do is there's a little lock kind of a or a chain link right here you want to unlink it so that way you can move the smart object underneath the mask and that way they stay the mask stays where it's at um, and so what I did is I just dragged that up to each person's group that had the smart object in it and then I would command T and you could drag that around and move the window basically and then when I got to the edges, I just brushed in. So this would have had a hard edge on the left side here. I just brushed in white to show so that it filled up to the edge. So and then you have the heart, which was basically a drawn heart with the uh, pen and the bezier tool. And then I added a bunch of layer styles. You have, let me turn some of these off. So here's your heart added a couple of gradient overlays to start making it darker and then added satin effect to kind of blur the um, the gradient some inner glow inner shadow bevel and emboss so the inner shadow actually I use inner shadow a lot to create highlights like edge highlights um, and if you go in and you set your color to something lighter and you set it onto screen or like color dodge or any of this section where it lightens the color that you've got selected in your area here. Um, it'll create a nice outer glow that you can then 
you know, adjust the distance and the angle and the size and all that fun stuff that's more um, adjustable than like uh, the outer glow, which the outer glow will go around your whole object. So you have your heart here. And then what I did with the heart is I had to rasterize it because if you try to, you know, you free transform and move this around, the heart basically moves under the gradients you've selected instead of moving the whole gradient and everything around, if that makes sense. This one won't select, I'm on the wrong layer. So yeah, this one I can move the whole gradient around. So I had to rasterize it to do that. So, and then I added um, some drips, basically these little tiny drips, which are basically the heart itself squished down and liquefied into a drip form. Um, and then I added some lens flares at the top just to give it uh, some like pop. And then um, let's zoom back out. In the uh, inspiration image we were using, there's a gradient at the bottom. So it doesn't technically need it on this one, but I thought I would just kind of keep it true to the inspiration we were using. And then um, I added some darkening around the edges and uh, just a few more like vignette -y type things. Um, and then I put a little bit of a pink hue at the top to kind of tie everything all together. Um, I think it helped a little bit, but that's the walkthrough of this group shot. All right, this one's a little bit more in depth. Um, what I did is I, before we shot, as I started this background, turn all these layers off. Um, and then I had, uh, let's take off the car lights and all that stuff. <clears throat> So I started the background. Um, it's basically a purple gradient. I started adding some lights and some hue and whatnot to kind of uh, mimic the inspiration image. I put in the floor, which is a darker solid color um, adjustment layer with a uh, masked gradient over it. Here you can see the gradient. And I put in a little bit of noise and then this um, color to kind of bring in the overall hue of the inspiration image. And then the light sticks. Um, the original light stick is, where is it? Right here. Um, it is basically a couple of rectangles and there's a white and there's a red and a blue. And that is to mimic kind of the uh, different discoloration around the edge of a fluorescent tube. Um, let me turn that off. So what I did then is I um, took those light sticks, made their own um, document, and I basically just started duplicating a bunch of them, rotating them, sizing them all individually. So that was a little bit time consuming, but it turned out pretty good. Then I added a levels above the lights uh, and I used this um, this levels adjustment layer and I don't know which what this slider is actually called. I guess it's the output levels possibly. But basically it takes um, the brightest thing and it allows you to change what the brightest area is. So the brightest area of the um, light sticks is not 100% white or 255 white. It's a little bit um, darker. So they kind of fade into the background a little bit better. And then I put in, let's go to the group. I put in the models, we did the shoot. And then I started putting like the car lights and things like that behind them. The car lights are basically just, um, just brush tools that are, or brushes that I brushed on and then liquefied or free transformed to kind of mold into shape. Um, so there's your car lights. There's actually one of the lights, uh, just a couple of brush tools and a, with a color, like a pink color. And I usually will save um, just one that I can reuse later if I need to on a, its own layer. Uh, and then I put each person in there, retouched on their own document and then thrown in here as a smart object. And then it has some uh, layer effects, some inner shadows is what I use for the edge glows a lot. Um, because basically you can take your lighter color, put it on one of these lightning modes, screen or color dodge, and then you have more control over like how bright it is around. If we're looking at the model on the left, how bright it is, you can bring the distance over, you can, 
you know, make it really soft or really hard. So there's a lot more um, control with it, I think. And then I just did a couple layers of that for the uh, really fine edge shadow is one layer. And then like the softer wrapped around is another um, layer. And what I did is I, if you option click on this and drag up onto another layer, it'll bring those layer effects to another layer. So I kind of just copied them all onto each model, each of their um, smart object. And then I have some some more curves to kind of make them pop to kind of bring out the midtones. Um, selective color. Uh, this one kind of adds a little bit of purple-ish to the um, to the shadows. And then I have the light streaks that kind of come over the models and their legs and stuff. And then this layer is just a little bit of lightning in the middle. I took a brush, you can't see it for here, but basically painted on a little bit of haze just over in the center of the whole image to give that, you know, kind of lighter feel in the middle of it. So that's the uh, walkthrough for this group shot. If you found this entertaining or helpful, please consider liking or subscribing. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments field. I'll do my best to answer them. And thanks everyone for watching.